Hopefully you've got your mind right. You've made a choice on what type of player you want to be today. You decide the passion, the energy, the level of execution, the physical and mental toughness you display. It is your choice. Today is a test of our character. It's a test of our culture. Some of you have been around here a long time. A lot of pain, a lot of sorrow, man. You make the choice how good you want to be. I want it for you. The only way we get that done is you go really hard. Every day, I don't care how many games you win, how many, you stay humble, you stay hungry, you keep getting better every day. Okay, that's what really good players do and good teams do. How about those nuts? Memories for Rutgers seniors, cheering that will always be remembered, friendships that will last a lifetime, moments which will be cherished. One final hurrah for players who gave their heart and soul to the Rutgers football program. One final bow, one final chance to reflect on what was and what might have been. One final moment to say goodbye. Families, friends, and coaches have witnessed it all, from tears to cheers to all points in between. Looking back, it was a football experience which enriched their careers and a college experience which shaped their lives. And now it's time for a final send-off, an emotional goodbye, as we take a look back at football Saturdays on the banks of the old Raritan. Images and moments to embrace. Let's get the show cracking.
serve in seven here in the Big Ten opener for the Scarlet Knights and the Cornhuskers. Tanner Lee backpedaling, throwing off his back foot, and he's thrown his eighth interception of the season. Bless on Austin catching it as he fell to his back. Oh my God, he. <laughs> okay, so I'll always remember the day he was born. So he was born um, July 19, July 19, um, 1996, and he was born at Downstate Hospital. Lasan was basically an energetic child. Very funny kid, um, someone that just didn't stay quiet, always busybody. Um, we were probably called to the school all the time, you know, because he was always, he was kind of like a joker. That's the kind of kid he was, but he was also loving. Real hyper. Always getting in trouble in like class from when I was young, being a class clown. Oh, um, right now we're in Springfield Gardens, Queens. Growing up in this area is, is, is good because you know the neighborhood is real quiet. It's kind of family oriented in this area here. You know, and everybody gels together real well in this house. You know, we're a real tight bonded family, and have been like that for my whole life. I really have an amazing family. I don't tell them enough because I like them to stay on their A game. We've been close from, you know, from when we had all our kids. We're all just characters. All of us have our own different type of personalities. My sister, Jasmine and Amber, a lot of personality, you know, fun to be around. They're funny. My older brother, real conservative, quiet dude, but he has his moments also. When our parents was at home, we was always up to something. If it wasn't play fighting, it was playing football. Yeah, it was just like that kind of, you know, brother-sister bond all the time, man. We had a park, you know, when we used to live in Brooklyn, we had a park around the corner, Betsy Head. So that was like the go-to park right there. You know, everybody would go there. I did everything, basketball, skateboarding, football, the whole nine. Um, Blesson fell into football because of his brother. But Blesson was always right in the back of him where he would run on the football field. And I really seen that he had a knack for certain things. He was a, he was, yeah, he was a natural. And I think Blesson was probably about five, five years old, very young, when he started watching his brother and then he had, the father had to put him in something. I grew a passion for the game. You know, my love for the game grew, you know, as I got older and I started realizing we always play football in the block. And everybody be like, hey, why you don't play for a team? Blah, blah. And then I met some guys, you know, that used to live in um, the same block with me on, in Brooklyn. And, you know, they kind of, you know, introduced me to a team that I could play for. And that's, you know, when I started playing for the Cardinals in Youth League. Rutgers, Big Ten school. And at the time, you know, I'm looking at it. Me, I'm a very competitive person. So looking at it, I'm just like, hey, can I play here early? You know, we in the Big Ten. And we was, we was doing pretty good the season I was being recruited. So I was like, why not? You know, they're right around they're right around away from me. I'm a New York guy. They're right in Jersey. Why not go there? Rutgers reached out to him. And at that time, Lasson was undecided. That was one of the schools Lasson wanted to go to from like pretty much day one. So I'm not quite sure if any other school had reached out, if they would have even had a chance. He wanted to go to Rutgers. And when that happened, it was like commitment immediately. He committed. You know, I was never a guy that needed the, the crazy big offers from other schools. I just wanted a school that believed in me and believed in what I can do. And that, that's it. My decision made. So the week of Nebraska, this is the healthiest I've been feeling the whole season. You know, this is the third game of the season. We woke up game day, and you know, I'm feeling real confident because you know, throughout the week, I'm catching picks and one on ones. It was third down, like third and eight. And I remember going through my pre-snap reads. I'm like, ah, this guy, he's gonna run a stop route, you know, to give you conversion routes, you know, third down and eight. So I'm like, he's gonna run a st like a stop route at the sticks. So I already predetermined the route and he ran it. So before, like, since I already knew I anticipated it, I tried to stop. Like I was running full speed. I tried to stop on a dom, but I broke wrong. My mechanics was off and, I, and that, that was the play. I just felt something snap in my leg. Um, I remember seeing that game, and I'm gonna try not to get here. Um, it tore me up because it was like, oh my God, that was gonna be one of his biggest seasons. Like he wanted to come back and, and, and come hard. And then that happened, it was almost like a setback. And I felt real sad for him. Just to know like, you know, he had to put a pause on his dream for a sec. It was heart wrenching, it was heart wrenching. But like I said before, we work off of energy. So as far as like, as soon as the injury took place and we found out what it was, 
it was like, where do we go from here? How do we apply and put ourselves in position to as far as like to build back from that? And we were already set. We already had a game plan. He came back from it. It was like a great recovery. You never know that he even tore his ACL. Just proud of him. All my kids are my hero, but as far as like for him to go through an injury like that and bounce back on a mental level and a physical aspect, oh, everything was uphill after that. Uphill. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm proud. I'm just proud of my son. I'm proud of everything that he's accomplished throughout his life so far. I can't express as a dad because you know what? I don't want to get emotional, but as far as like, yeah, I'm extremely proud. Bless is a, he's like, that's what his name reflects. He's a blessing. I'm very proud, I mean, of myself, to be honest, and my family, you know, for supporting me and believing me throughout this whole thing, because it's been a long journey. I'm just a big believer in like, God blessed me with a talent, so why not take advantage of that and try to maximize it to the best of my ability? And that's just how I think about it. And I love this game very much. So why not keep playing for as long as I could play? everyone, I'm Bruce Beck along with the coach. Welcome to Our Football with Chris Ash, the season finale edition. Coach, another tough game against Michigan State, another game that was there for the taking. How do you look at it? Well, I, I look at it, uh, I take the positives from it, is how I always look at it. It was a hard fought game. It's uh, challenging, it's frustrating, it's disappointing, but our players laid it on the line. And in the situation that we were in this season, at the end of the season, to go play like we did says a lot about the character of our locker room. We were just really close, some missed opportunities. It was a battle of field position that we ended up losing at the end of the game. Now Rochino going for the end zone. Oh. What a pass, what a catch. Touchdown, Rutgers. Gio Rochino got the start, his first start of the year. And once again, he stepped up in a big way in terms of his leadership and in terms of the way he executed the offense. He did a great job, uh, did a great job all week in his preparation. He did a great job on Saturday. There are plays that he'd like to take back or plays that he thought he could have made uh, that were there for us and we didn't make them. But just the, the, his poise, his leadership, his fight and determination to try to lead the offense was outstanding. Defensively, 11 passes broken up. That was a season high. You gave up a little over 300 yards, but they had 82 plays, Coach. Yeah, they had a lot of plays. Some of it was our own doing. We, we missed some opportunities on third down, but I thought our defense played outstanding. Uh, we made some critical stops at the end of the first half uh, when we uh, they got the ball back deep in our territory, and we, we came up and made a big stop. They got no points. So we, we did a lot of great things in that game. We're playing defense at the end of the season like I wanted us to play the whole season. Unfortunately, no, that's not the way it worked out, but really proud of our guys and the effort that they have put in. Oh, yeah. He lost his footing, and this is Lewerke, normally the quarterback. And he's going to throw an interception. Trevor Morris picks it. And Trevor Morris returns it out around the 35-yard line. And Chris Ash is fired up. And Trevor Morris, no doubt, was one of the leaders once again with eight tackles, an interception, two passes broken up. What about his consistency? You know, he's playing his best football, and that's what you want out of your seniors to play their best football their senior year, especially late in the season. And Trevor was doing that. It gets back to his just preparation, taking care of his body, and just his love for his teammates, because not everybody does that, and, and Trevor's been doing that. What about the eight players that started every game this year, guys including Saquon Hampton and Damon Hayes and Trevor Morris and Kamal Seymour? Or what does that say about getting through a season these days and starting every football game? Yeah, it's hard. In the Big Ten, it's a rugged league. It's a physical league. And when you can do that, it means you're really taking care of your body. You, you train the right way in the offseason to get to the season, but then you've taken care of your body throughout the season to be able to do that. The challenge is how do we get more players to be able to do that, to be able to play every game the whole season? We look at the last four games of the year, and everyone said, oh, man, this is going to be really difficult. And yet, if I look at the last five games, you were in three and had a chance to win three of those five. How about that, Coach? We started the season off rough, and I get it, knowing it. Um, and then you look at the end of the season when we're playing much uh, better uh, competition in terms of you know what the perception of the programs are. 
Uh, everyone thought it was going to be really difficult and challenging, and, and it was, but we were playing our best football, and the games were a lot more competitive. There were opportunities to win games. There were missed opportunities uh, from our standpoint to, to win some games, but I'm really encouraged by what we saw from our football team in the last five games. If we can build on that, there are going to be a lot of good Saturdays in the future. And on fourth down, Sitkowski throws. Blackshear with the catch, and it's a touchdown. Eighth catch of the day for Raheem Blackshear. Make some notes on Raheem Blackshear because he ended up leading you in carries, catches, and yards in both categories. The first guy since Albert Smith in 1985 to do that, and he's back. That's the most important thing. We have a lot of young players back, and uh, that, that's really important on both sides of the ball. But Raheem is the leader of, of uh, those guys coming back. He's a dynamic player. He can do a lot of things. Our job is to get more guys involved that can do things like he can and take the load off him a little bit. But he's a dynamic player, and uh, we need to build everything around him. And I say Pacheco is another guy who had two 100-yard rushing games. Did you think he was going to be this good? You know, I, I thought he had a chance to be, didn't know it would be this uh, soon. He's really worked to learn the offense and really plays hard. I really felt deep inside he was going to be an outstanding football player because he loves the game and he plays it so hard. But I'm really pleased that he really came on here this season so quickly and uh, we can build on that performance for the future. Right down to numbers there, right down to numbers. There you go. Hey, that's why we recruited you. Can we give a shout out to Adam Korsak because when you look at his punting, in this ball game in particular, six inside the 20, all year long he was consistent and he gave a 63 yard boot in this game. I mean, this guy's a weapon. He's phenomenal, and I, I again, kind of like Isaiah, I knew he was going to be very good. I just didn't know it was going to be this soon. I know there were a lot of conversations early in the season that, uh, you know, he looked a little off, looked different, but he was just trying to figure out, uh, you know, what it was like playing in a game. He had never played in a real football game like that, and once he got comfortable and got going, you could see the potential that he has, and to have him for three more seasons, outstanding. What did it tell you about your guys going on the road and being right there, able to come up with a W? Well, I think what it shows uh, people on the outside is the character that we have on the inside. Because if you, again, I've said this week after week after week, I love this locker room, I love this team, there's a strong brotherhood. And that allowed us to improve late in the season, it allowed us to go to Michigan State against a very good team and have a chance to win that game because of the locker room. Coach, we've got a lot more ahead on this show, including a chat with Tariq Cole, who has been a staple on that offensive line. More Our Football with Chris Ash just ahead. Five years, 42 games, sure went fast for Tariq Cole, who calls it a career on the banks as a left tackle who really impressed a lot of people over the years. Congratulations, first of all, Tariq. Thank you. I really appreciate that. What was the experience like in your mind? You know, it was unbelievable. Uh, kid coming from Long Beach High School, I never thought I would be a Division I football player, and now I'm here, and the experience has just been great. How did you grow both as a football player and as a man? Uh, as a football player, I learned five different offenses. Um, from Rob Spence to now Coach McNulty, it's been incredible. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's been certainly something. It's been um, a challenge. Yeah, uh, football has just been a part of me now. Um, I love it. It's something I want to do for the rest of my life. If I can, if I have the opportunity to go to the NFL, it would be great. But as a man coming here, it's changed my whole personality, the way I see things. I've seen different guys from different races, different towns, rich, poor, doesn't matter. It's all helped me become better as a man. And the ethnic balance of this area in general is spectacular in my mind. Yeah, Rutgers, uh, New Brunswick especially, is uh, culturally infused with a lot of, a lot of different just people. I feel like this, this particular university just has different cultures from everywhere. So we're talking about the next chapter for you. First of all, I know you want to be a professional football player. Yes. That means bar pro day. It means hopefully going to the combine. So how much are you going to start working now that the season's over? Are you going to work again? I got to go as soon as I'm done with college because I'm done in a couple weeks in December. So I finish with that. I'm going to go home for about a week and then I'm coming back and I'm training wherever I choose to train, um, whatever agent I hopefully have to choose from will get me right and I just want to have the best pro day slash combine I can. Why would teams want to draft Tariq Cole? Um, my leadership, my effort on the field, and just the way I get around with guys in the locker room. I feel like coming here and coming to Rutgers and being a leader from pretty much the get-go has really helped me and I feel like I can transfer that to NFL. 
do you feel you're there as a football player already, or is it just the tip of the iceberg in terms of your talent? It's definitely the tip of the iceberg. I've got a lot more to learn. Um, I've got to definitely get stronger, faster, and just quicker off the ball, and all those things are just going to help me. Coach Ash said that the seniors contribute in a big way in helping the development of the younger guys in buying into the system and never giving up. What was your look back? Um, I look back is definitely never giving up. Um, the workouts that Coach Parker had us do during the summertime and the wintertime certainly just embodied what Coach Ash was telling us. So never giving up, never giving in. Um, there are videos that people have seen of us doing leg press or squatting or bench pressing, right. and we just never have that, that feeling of we can't do this anymore. It's always push through it, we got it, it's going to be fine, just, just go. What's your message to the youngsters on the banks who will be following your footsteps? Um, we're up and rising. Uh, we know the season hasn't gone the best that we wanted it to, but we're getting closer and closer each game. Was it frustrating not to get the results and still put out the effort? Obviously. Uh, we trained all year for just to play 12 games. And not to have those 12 games the, the way that we wanted them to come out, is certainly disappointing, but we still have to look at some of the good things that are happening. So we have been getting better, and we haven't given up on a lot of things, so we have to maintain that and bring that into next year. What was senior day like for you? Oh, it was emotional. I thought so. Yeah, uh, some tears? Uh, not, not, not so much tears, um, but I'd, I've, I've been here for five years, and to say that was my last home game was... It, you felt it, right? I, I felt all of it. Uh, it was. It was emotional for me, my mom, my coaches, everybody. And you think about the people that got you here. This was as much about their journey as yours, don't you think? Yeah, definitely. Um, I had my high school coach come, and he was the one that, that had me go to the first camp I've ever done at Rutgers, which was an offensive line big man camp. And that's what got me recruited, and that is something that just helped me out come here, and now I'm here. So what's your message going forward in terms of the kids that are going to play for Rutgers down the road and in terms of the experience that you enjoyed here at RU? First, it's going to be hard. We play in arguably one of the best conferences in the world. Um, each week we play teams that just get better and better. So you're going to have to get better and better as the weeks go and you just can't give up on yourself. The last question is, we've talked a lot about, I think, philosophy, we've talked about experience. Did you have some fun, Tariq? Of course I had fun. This is, uh, college is supposed to be the best time of your life. And I truly do believe that college, for me, at Rutgers University was amazing. Tariq Cole, number 65, who carried himself with elegance and class for five years on the banks. From all of us, thank you and good luck. Thank you, appreciate it. More Our Football with Chris Ash coming up in a moment. I love every single one of y'all boys. Family on three. One, two, three. Family. Hi, I'm Dr. Yvette Rooks, Chief Medical Officer for Robert Wood Johnson, Barnabas Health Sports Medicine. As we approach flu season, your flu vaccination is very important, but I remind you that all vaccinations are important. They are important to provide health and wellness for society. So please get vaccinated and get your flu shot today. The R Play of the Game is sponsored by Nissan. Intelligent mobility. Time for the Nissan Intelligent Mobility Play of the Week. And coach, a beautiful pass from Rochino to Volkolek. Yeah, it was. It was a well-designed play down in the red zone. Great uh, protection by the offensive line. Great read by Gio. We saw Travis coming open down the, the middle of the field. And then threw the ball, and then Travis just made a tremendous catch. Went up and caught the ball, brought it in, uh, scored a touchdown. And just those are signs of things to come from Travis. A 27-yard touchdown play. I look at Travis, four catches in the game. The improvement he's made since the midway of the season. Tremendous. You know, he's shown signs of what we thought he could become as a player here. He had a tremendous spring. Uh, for whatever reason, he was slow to get out of the gates uh, at the beginning of the season, but he really came on as of late, and Michigan State was his best game. We're going to build on that because I think he can be a real weapon for us. Had Jerome Washington never gotten hurt, we might not have seen this development. Uh, no, you're right, because Jerome would have been out there and, and been in those situations, but really pleased uh, about Travis. Just continue to work, continue to get better, learn the offense, and put himself in position to make plays. This game preview is sponsored by HighPoint.com. 
So, Coach, we headed to the off season. What's the focus for the coaching staff, first of all? We just got to get better. You know, we're going to go back and review everything that we do from A to Z in the program. We'll review personnel. We will review our schemes, uh, how we recruit, how we develop, and find ways to do it better. We have a really good group of, p of players coming back. I, I'm very excited about the young group of players coming back. We just got to work uh, relentlessly to make them as good as they can be and move this program forward. I think if I count correctly, there were 16 players that were starters that are coming back next year that were on the field against Michigan State. Yeah, you know, you just look at the offensive, defensive players, absolutely. We got a ton of special teams players that are coming back. But we have a tremendous nucleus of players coming back that we can build this program on. Where do the players spend their time now in terms of improvement, in terms of getting stronger, all of the aspects of the program? Well, we got to get bigger and stronger, especially up front on both sides of the ball. And it's about depth uh, on the uh, defensive line especially, but on both sides of the ball, we've got to uh, develop some depth. And then it's just about football IQ, continuing to learn the game. And that's where being consistent with our schemes is really important. So instead of learning, they're developing and improving uh, on those schemes. And that's really where we're at right now. Art Sitkowski had an opportunity to play a lot as a freshman. Do you look for continued development? Oh, absolutely. I'm very excited about Art, have been excited about Art. He went through a, a lot of learning opportunities this season. There were good times, there were bad times, but we're going to build on the positives and we're going to look at what we ask Art to do and make sure we're putting him in the best situations to be successful. But he's got the, a chance to be a great player. We still feel that way and we got to develop him to be the player that he can become. I look back at a game like Wisconsin where he was 20 for 39 for 200. 61 yards, one touchdown, no picks. Is that the type of performance you expect from him going forward? Absolutely. If you look back, there were a couple 200-plus uh, yard games passing that we need to build off of. There were a lot of uh, great plays that he made. Now, we got to obviously eliminate some of the negative ones that he had, and that's part of the development process, and he'll get where we want him to be. Overall, offensively in this league, do you feel you have to get better to compete? Absolutely. We got to get better in all phases, but uh, offensively, it's about scoring points. If you look at college football in this day and age, if you don't score points, you better be elite on defense. And we've got to score more points. We all know that. Uh, coaches, the players, we all know that, and that's what we have to get done. So if I'm a player at RU who's heading into his sophomore year or junior year, what should I be doing to make myself better and make the team better? Uh, there's a lot of things. It's not just one thing, but it, it starts with their commitment uh, and their love for their teammates and their desire and willingness to make sacrifices to continue to improve. It's going to take an insane amount of work for us to move this program forward and get to the uh, spot where we all want to be. And it, it takes time, it takes effort, and it takes a lot of sacrifice, and, a, and that all starts with the commitment that they have. Coach, there were a lot of people that were extremely supportive of the Rutgers program throughout this year. What do you want to say to them? Well, we really appreciate the support of all the fans, especially the ones that are close to our program that come here often to practice. They're here in the off season. We can't thank them enough, and we need their continued support to help us build to get this program where we want it to be. And what do you say to some of the skeptics, Coach? You know, this is just like business. When you start up a business at times, there's improvement without results. Our locker room is as strong and as connected as it's ever been. The attitude is uh, very positive. The desire to continue to work to get better is there. What I'm excited about is to go prove people wrong that we do belong in this league and we can win games and we will do that here. We want to thank Jeff Stick, Mike Nicolazzo, Craig O'Brien, and of course, the guru of community relations, media relations, and public relations, Haseem Phillips for all their help during the past year. And Coach, it's been great working with you again. Yeah, Bruce, I appreciate it to, to you and all the production uh, team. Uh, another outstanding season. Really appreciate your support. Great working with you, Coach. That's it for this edition of Our Football with Chris Ash. We'll see you next season, everyone. I'm Bruce Beck. Enjoy. Enjoy.